Hey, we're in a bit of a building site at the moment because we're having some work done in the main lab to make two bigger spaces. We're getting more students, we're trying to do things better. But it means this room is full of stuff. So I'm in a bit of a, what's now become a cupboard full of, full of models, so we're a bit rammed. Um, hyoid bone, um, I saw in the comments, somebody said, could you do a video on the hyoid bone? Thought I'd done it, I haven't done it, so good idea, thank you. I then looked for that comment to reply and say, good idea, but I, I couldn't find it. I'm getting quite a lot of comments these days, and the reason I don't reply to that many comments is because I got a full-time job that is very demanding, and these videos are extra to that. So, thank you for all your comments. The hyoid bone, where is it? How come it's just hanging there? What's it for? What muscles and ligaments are attached to it? I'm not gonna look at every single muscle. I'm gonna save that for a future video because there's a lot of muscles, but they are fairly sensibly named. Um, we'll look at the blood supply. And actually it's very topical at the moment. A, um, a famous person has died. His hyoid bone was fractured. It's caused a bit of a stir because the hyoid bone can be used in a post-mortem examination to try to determine whether somebody was strangled or whether they were hung. But as we look at the anatomy, you'll see that it's not as simple as that. First of all then, where is the hyoid bone? Well, actually it's, it's, it's right underneath the mandible. It's right at the top of the airway, as it were. So if you find the thyroid cartilage, which is your laryngeal prominence, then you have a thyrohyoid membrane superiorly to that. And if you follow that up, you can find your hyoid bone, you can give it a squeeze and you can wiggle it from side to side, but be gentle, it doesn't feel very nice. So you, you, can, oh, yeah. you can palpate it, but it's not very pleasant. Um, so of course, when we look at these structures, it looks quite different, it kind of looks useful in situ compared to when we look at a skeleton. So if we look at a skeleton, here's the hyoid bone, and it's this U-shaped bone that seems to be just floating there. Ah, it's kind of one of those popular pub quiz questions. What's the only bone in the body that doesn't articulate with any other bones in the body? It's the hyoid bone. Of course, for that to be true, you have to discount all of the sesamoid bones you know, like the uh, patella and stuff, those bones that are floating in tendons. But, you know, there you go. You might have a were actually moment, but that, that's kind of not a thing we do, is it? Um, the hyoid bone, it's a U-shaped thing, and the name hyoid comes from the U-shaped letter of the ancient Greek alphabet that it kind of mimics, hyoid, hy I don't know, I can't remember how you I don't even know if, how you pronounce it or, um, yeah. Anyway, hyoid, that's where the word comes from. And then stuff that attaches to the hyoid fairly faithfully, if it does a good job of attaching to the hyoid and is significant, gets the name hyoid in its, in its name. So you find stylohyoid ligament, stylohyoid muscle, thyrohyoid, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you can be fairly confident then when you're looking at the names of things, um, what they're attaching to and also, if you're trying to work out the name of something, if you, if you look at where it goes from and to, you can then work out its name, all right? We'll, we'll maybe see a little bit of that. At rest, it's about at the level of the C3. One, two, three, four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it will be up here a little bit. So C1, C2, C3, C4. Um, it's at about the level of the body of the C3 vertebra or C4 vertebra. It's right up there. Um, at the level of the mandible, so it's very, very well protected. It's very deep and it's very up and out of the way. So it's not a bone that's commonly fractured. It's quite hard to fracture. And in fact, when we talk about fractures, we'll find out what the function of this thing is, because when it's damaged, we then see changes in function. Um, it's, it's got a central body, and then it's got two horns. It's got the greater horns that form the main part of the the, you know, the arms of the U, and then it's got two lesser horns that stick up a little bit. The lesser horns are very obvious. Uh, the horns also get called cornu, so a, a lesser cornu and the greater cornu and the body, and the body's a fair old chunk. If I get a larynx, big airway, big larynx, right? Uh, and this is when you, so when you have the hyoid bone 
in situ, it kind of looks, it looks useful, doesn't it? It's, it looks like an integral part of the larynx. Whereas if you just look at it on the skeleton, it's just kind of this floating thing on its own. This is the body of the hyoid bone. This is the greater horn, greater horn, lesser horn, lesser horn. And of course, if we've got lumpy bits of bone, that's because things attach there. So it is, as you can see, it's kind of the superior most part of the laryngeal cartilages, of the laryngeal bits and bobs. Here's the epiglottis, here's the hyoid bone, here's the thyroid cartilage, here's the thyrohyoid membrane running between the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone, cricoid cartilage and so on. Here's the thyrohyoid muscle between the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid membrane. Um, yeah, you get, my, you get my gist. So, how's it hanging? Well, we see that it's attached to the thyroid cartilage by the thyrohyoid membrane, but it's also attached to the styloid processes. So these are the styloid processes here, very obvious pointy spiky things. There's the mastoid process, which you can palpate next to the ear. The styloid process is much deeper and it's a significant process because it has a number of things attached to it. And the stylohyoid ligament runs from the styloid process anteriorly to the hyoid. Um, so it's suspended from the stylohyoid ligament, from the styloid membrane, uh, the, the styloid process. It's at the top of the, of the laryngeal structures. And then it's held in place by a number of muscles running between the mandible and the hyoid bone. And then it's also held in place by a number of muscles running between the hyoid bone and more inferior structures like the sternum and, and the thyroid cartilage. And it's also attached to the tongue. So it's also kind of, kind of hanging from the tongue, suspended from the tongue, but it's also supporting the tongue and giving the tongue um, a bit of function. So it's the lesser horn, the lesser cornu, that receives the stylohyoid ligament. So that's how it's, it's suspended. That's the main role of the lesser horn. Um, so then it's the body and the greater horn that we can see is receiving the thyrohyoid membrane, but also then the body and the greater horns are receiving um, most of the muscles that I'm gonna list later. So they're big muscular attachments. The other interesting thing then about the hyoid bone is that the body and the greater horn on either side um, are separate through kind of the first half of, of your life. So there is um, a fibrous, fibrocartilaginous. I've seen some descriptions of, of the synovial type joint here, but there's a joint between the greater horn and the body up until about my age, up until about middle age. And then as you hit my age and you get older, that joint ossifies, that joint and the three bones then fuse, so you have a single hyoid bone. So do you see then that in younger people, it's actually harder to fracture the hyoid bone, but as you get to my age and older, it's a little bit easier because it's more of a solid thing. Imagine snapping a wishbone in a turkey. If it had a flexible bit in that wishbone, it becomes very difficult, but if it's, if it's, if it's completely rigid, it snaps fairly easily. But don't forget, it's actually quite well protected up here. All right, um, so the ligaments associated with the, thyroid, the, with the hyoid bone are the thyrohyoid membrane, the stylohyoid ligament, and then we have hyoepiglottic membranes here, and they kind of form some of these folds. So this is the epiglottis. When you swallow, the epiglottis doesn't close off the airway, but as the, as the larynx lifts, the epiglottis covers the airway and directs the food and what have you that you're swallowing around the airway and down the esophagus. It doesn't completely block it and you know that because you've <coughs> coughed up water before from your larynx, right? Um, so then that epiglottis is attached to the hyoid bone by hyoepiglottic membranes or ligaments, all right? So that's the ligamentous bit. So what's it for? Well, if it does get fractured or displaced or moved, um, people then complain about um, difficulty talking. So it seems to be important in the movements of the tongue, supporting the tongue, giving the tongue a wider range of movement than if you didn't have a hyoid bone anchoring it and supporting it. 
uh, and they have um, problems, difficulty or pain swallowing and maybe breathing as well. Um, so it's, it's important um, in, in the swallowing movement and you know that when you swallow the larynx moves up and down. We've talked about swallowing before, we looked at the larynx and the pharynx. So it seems to help with swallowing and if the hyoid bone is damaged there seems to be possibly an increased risk of aspiration pneumonia. That is things that you're eating um, or drinking are more likely to pass into the airway and cause an infection in the lung and also maybe stomach acid and, uh, and stuff that, that comes up from the esophagus is more likely to pass into the airway if the hyoid bone isn't working normally. So that gives clues as to its function. It also seems to be important in keeping the airway open and currently it's an area of study um, in sleep apnea um, in people may have hyoid bone dysfunction um, or problems with their hyoid bones causing problems with, with their airway when they're sleeping at night. And that makes complete sense because we see the hyoid bone at the top of the larynx pretty much you know, at, the, at the top of this part of the airway here. So it seems sensible that it's going to have a role in, in, in keeping the, la the airway separate from the foodway um, and also in keeping the airway open. What about muscles then? Well there's a lot. Um, we have geniohyoid, Gen Yu is referring to the chin in this, in this instance. So there's a muscle running from the chin to the hyoid bone, the chin's part of the mandible. We also have mylohyoid, um, which is running from the mandible to the hyoid bone. Mylohyoid refers to the molar teeth, so it's attached um, really posteriorly to the mandible where you find the molars. Um, We've got stylohyoid muscle as well as the stylohyoid ligament, so that can pull the that can pull the uh, the hyoid bone posteriorly. Um, we've got omohyoid. Omo refers to the shoulder, um, so that actually runs from the hyoid out towards the scapula. Digastric, if you know digastric and omohyoid, digastric also uh, attaches to the the hyoid as it runs past. We've got um, hyoglossus, so a glossus refers to the tongue, so the muscle hyoglossus is running between the tongue and the hyoid bone. Uh, genioglossus, which is another tongue muscle, also has a little bit of an attachment to the hyoid bone. Um, is that all of them up there? Maybe. Um, then as we work our way down inferiorly, we have thyrohyoid, which we saw running between the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone. We have the sternohyoid muscle running between the, the sternum and the hyoid bone. Uh, that's most of the strap muscles, so you can see how those things all interplay in, you know, uh, pulling the mandible down and pulling the hyoid bone up the hyoid bone up and down to elevating and depressing the hyoid bone and in, in doing that then elevating and lowering the larynx and so on. The other muscle that's attached is the middle pharyngeal constrictor muscle. So we've got three pharyngeal constrictor muscles, superior, middle and inferior, which are the upper part of the, uh, of the esophagus really. So when swallowing occurs, they push the bolus of food, bum, 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 that's where peristalsis starts, down into the esophagus and the middle pharyngeal constrictor is also anchored to the hyoid bone. So if you look at that list the hyoid bone looks like a really important structure. So what's the blood supply to this bone? Well it's close to the tongue and we have the lingual artery running down in this region so the lingual artery can supply blood vessels to the hyoid bone. We've also got here's the the thyroid gland here, here's the superior thyroid artery um, and that can also send off branches, in fact we can see a branch running through to the larynx here, so that can also send off branches to the hyoid bone and both of those are arteries that have come from the external carotid artery. So what about fractures of the hyoid bone then and, and using this as a post-mortem indicator to determine whether somebody has been murdered? Well um, there are a few studies on this and it seems to be the case that the hyoid bone is more commonly fractured if somebody is, is strangled, if force is applied to this region um, by somebody else uh, rather than if somebody has been hung by a noose, by a rope or by some sort of uh, ligature. But of course it's not as simple as that. 
the hyoid bone is more likely to be broken in an older person, someone around my age or older, where it has become a single solid U shape of bone, than in somebody that's younger, that still has some flexibility between the greater horns and the body. It's also going to depend on, on, uh, on weight and other factors. So it's not a clear cut thing. If the hyoid bone is fractured, it doesn't mean somebody was strangled to death. That said, the hyoid bone is well protected, so it is unlikely to be fractured. Um, so that's a bit of a sorry note to end on, but that's it. The parts of the hyoid bone, um, a list of the structures that attach to it. If we look at the muscles, if we actually look at the muscles, we'll spend another video looking at the muscles and other models, because that's quite a big job. Um, blood supply, fractures, um, how it moves, where it is how it's just hanging there and that sort of thing. All right, okay, hopefully that was helpful. Um, I see that there's an uptick in viewers at the moment, so I'm guessing that people are about to return to university or are returning to university already. We start, uh, we start our term in medicine in September. Um, most other courses start in October. I don't know about you guys, what courses are you starting or going back to and when do you start back? I can just see whoop, you're getting busy again watching lots of videos, which is, which is great. Are you just keen or is it time to study again? Anyway, I hope you had a good summer um, and I'll see you guys next week for another one.